Mrs. Gamble, Lauren Ward, Kaylee Harris, come to the office, please. Uh, Katie Atkins. I think we started it yesterday. I don't know if we got through all of it. We're like on one of the last lines down. Um, and then I want to do some examples of like what the homework's going to look like eventually. Uh, you know, how, how can we use this stuff? What would the homework look like? What can we possibly do with it? So that's what we're going to go through today. So today's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of participation here and kind of, you know, try some problems out, you know, draw in your notebook, that type of thing. Um, I believe yesterday's PowerPoint is already on the website. Um, I checked this morning, it's there for sure. The video is not though. Um, um, so that should be hopefully online today. I don't know if it's uploading yet. So hopefully that'll be up there at some point too. If you're gone yesterday, I'm gonna watch that. All right, uh, today we're gonna continue on section three two. Remember the goal was yesterday was to talk about all the properties of these angles because the way that the parallel lines kind of work together to make those. Okay, so that's what we worked on yesterday. Uh, we had a bunch of properties. Uh, so our goal today is to go through these, uh, these basic properties. Uh, those, the first postulate, which we call the corresponding angle postulate, and then the theorems. Now the theorems had names like alternate interior, uh, same side interior, alternate exterior, and then the last one, three, four, was the one we ended with yesterday. It was like right when the bell went off. It was uh, called the uh, perpendicular transversal, which I don't know if we've got the name of it. Uh, so we're going to do that one today. I want to finish that one for sure, take our time on those. But I'm going to click through these just to make sure we understand what they were. Uh, we need to make sure that we understand um, pop, or theorem 3-2 as a different name in the book versus what I'm giving you um, because I don't like the way that they suddenly switch the name of it. Um, so we're going to talk about that today. And then once we're through those, we're just going to do some uh, some examples of uh, like what the homework can look like. Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, so that we're going to spend some time on this. I don't know if we'll have enough time to finish all the examples I kind of put on the PowerPoint here. 
we'll kind of play it by, you know, play it by where we get to. Uh, if we get through them all, fine. If we don't, no big worries. My goal today was to go uh, to get homework. Now, this, I, I am not guaranteeing that you're going to get homework today. I'm not. That's not my goal. My goal is to get through those those basic examples so that you are comfortable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we don't get to homework, no worries. We'll, we'll push back to the later date. Okay? Uh, but I want to get through these today. That's kind of what I want to get through. At least a few of them. Okay? All right, let's first, let's start reviewing those postulates. So you should already have them in your notes, but I want to click through the PowerPoint just so we can see them. So, okay, uh, postulate three, one, uh, two parallel lines. This is the big idea, parallel lines idea, that they're cut with a transversal, kind of like this, and each of the corresponding angles are congruent. So I, I kind of color-coded these. This is the one that I used yesterday. Corresponding angles are like one and three. Those are corresponding ones interior. One's exterior, and they're on the same side of the transversal. This is the transversal. And then two and four are another pair, five and seven are another pair, and then six. So those corresponding angles are equal. Now, even if you kind of turn your head sideways, it still works. Even going vertical, that type of thing. You just have to know where your transversal is, so you can identify where the interior angles are and exterior. Remember, corresponding. They're on the same side of the transversal, one's interior, one's exterior, and they do not touch. That's why I picked one and three. Okay, um, again, we call that the corresponding angle postulate. That was one we had yesterday. So, you know, this is a postulate, we take it for granted. We don't prove it. That was one of the things we used yesterday. Okay, any questions with the first one we had yesterday? Again, it's on the, it's on the website, so if you want to click through that, it's there. Okay, all right. Theorem 3.1. Now this is a theorem, so we did we did prove this one yesterday. Um, two parallel lines cut with a transversal. The alternate interior angles are equal. So here's the picture I gave you. So we have our parallel lines. These are the interior angles, the only ones I numbered. We have a transversal. The alternate interior are the ones that are on the opposite sides of the transversal, so one's top, one's bottom, and they're not touching. So like one and three, and two and four. What they said is that these angles are equal. And how we did that, we used the last postulate. So what I think I did yesterday is I threw an extra angle in here. I said that one is equal to this angle, and then since one, this thing, I think I called this five. Since one, five are equal, five and three are equal because they're vertical. <coughs> vertical angles, I think, are two eight. And then um, since those are equal, then of course one and three to be the same. And that was uh, that's called the um, alternate interior, right? So that was the name of the theorem. They just named it by whatever the type of thing was. So it's very, very simple. Okay, questions with 3 1. Okay. Okay. 3 2. Now, this is a goofy one. This is one that the book had uh, a different name to it, and I didn't like it. Um, but I will go through the names here just so you kind of know it. Um, but this one is very, very different than the others. Um, they're not talking about equal, like congruent. They're talking about supplementary on this one. So that's a big deal. Okay, so two, two parallel lines cut with a transversal. Each pair of same side interior angles are supplementary. Not equal, but supplementary. That's a big deal. We're going to have to use that one today. So the same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay, now, they didn't call these same side interior in this section, 3, 2. I don't know why, but the switch of author, I think. Uh, what they call them is consecutive interior angles. I don't like that. I don't like that they suddenly switch the name. So I'm, just, I'm still going to call it same side interior. Because it makes sense. It's more descriptive. Uh, but here's our picture. So we have interior angles again. Same side interior are like 1 and 2. Those are same side interior. Or 3 and 4. They're on the same side of the transversal. And they're not touching. So that's why it's you know, 3 and 4. Uh, they're supplementary. So usually what we have is when we use this property... Uh, it's when we have like boxes, and you know they gave me an angle here. Well, now I can find this angle because they have to add it to the 180. Uh, so that's that's where we're going to use it like later on. Uh, but again, they're supplementary. They add to make 180. Okay, questions on three two. Now again, the book called it this. Consecutive interior angles. I call it same side interior angles. <coughs> and the weird part was the other weird note about this one. This one should have had a pair. It should have had another theorem that followed it. 
called the same type of exterior that has the same property. The exterior angles are like these two. They're the ones on the outside. They follow the same property. They add to be 180 as well because of this. I find it weird that they didn't have it. Maybe I just I didn't see it in the book. I looked. I, I couldn't find it. So and I find that weird. They usually come in a pair. Alright, moving on. Um, 3 3, this is a pretty normal one. It's, it's open and exterior. So parallel lines cut with a transversal. The alternate exterior angles are equal. So we're back to the equal idea again. So here's my exterior angles, the ones on the outsides. The alternate exterior, the ones on the all opposite sides of the transversal, so on the top one, the bottom, and they're not touching. So like I did five and seven, and then six and eight. Those are equal. We showed that. Again, it follows from corresponding and vertical again. So that was three, three. We call this the alternate exterior angle theorem. So those angles are equal. And then the last one we got to yesterday, and I think it was the bell went off, and I think we are just starting, I'm pretty sure. Correct? Just we are just finishing. Okay, good. So, 3 4. The name, uh, or the words, in a plane, a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, then it has to be perpendicular to the other. So, here's the picture. Now, the picture that I picked is actually showing what we're trying to prove. So, this is actually trying to show what I'm trying to. Um, give you here. We have parallel lines. If this transversal T is perpendicular to one of the lines, it has to be perpendicular to the other line. So this is what we're trying to prove right here, this little symbol on that second one. So what you have to have a good imagination of is that this is not there right now. So ignore that symbol. It's not supposed to be there. So um, let's do the proof here. I think I started yesterday. Line one, uh, we start with the obvious things. A is parallel to B, so they're parallel lines. We know that from the purple like arrows. Uh, then uh, we also know that T is perpendicular to A. And that is our given. And again, this is the perpendicular symbol. It means that they actually cross, make a T intersection, and it's, and it's a right angle. And I think that's how we started this one, correct? If we had steps, we said line two was that whatever this angle is, I, I think I just gave it a number yesterday, called like angle number one. That angle number one is a right angle. And the reason why that's true, that is the definition of perpendicular. It means that you have a right angle from there. That's what that little box means. Well, step three, what is a right angle? Like what is the number four? So that was step three, right? Measure of angle one is 90 degrees. That's the definition of a right angle. Right angles. And I believe we got to like almost like right here. And then we, I think I, I was trying to throw in an extra angle in here. I think I called this like angle number two down here. And one and two are the same. So this would be wait, line four. Line four. Angle one is congruent to angle two. And how we know that, uh, that is our corresponding angle again. That's corresponding angle posture. That first posture we did today. Corresponding angle posture. So they're corresponding. Once interior and exterior are on the same side of the transversal, those are equal. So if those angles are equal, then I can do a quick substitution. I can plug this 90 into here. And that's basically where this proof goes. And that's what I want to show. Right? So dot, dot, dot. 90 is equal to angle 2. You know? Because uh, I substituted that in there. That's a substitution. And that's what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to show that it is actually perpendicular to the second line as well. That this had to be a 90 degree angle. Okay, questions, comments, concerns about um, 3 4. The whole goal is to show that we have another 90 degree angle down the bottom. That was the whole idea. It was perpendicular to the other one. It was just corresponding. That's the reason why it works. Oh, 
Okay. Um, now, name of this one, I think I said it earlier, is called the Perpendicular Transversal Theorem. So it's talking about a perpendicular, but the transversal is perpendicular. So I'll look right there. Now there is one topic that I need to talk about before we continue on today. Um, and it's this idea of parallel, parallel lines, right? Um, let's discuss that before we move on, to, before we try some of these examples with this stuff. Um, what's the definition of parallel? How do we know that lines are parallel? What do we have? What do we know? There's two parts to it. They never touch, they never intersect, right? Okay, what was the other part? They're on the same plane. Okay, so lines that are on the same plane and they never touch. That's what makes parallel. Okay, that's not skew. Skew is when they're on different planes. Okay, so here's the thing. We're on that basic understanding. Parallel lines don't intersect, right? They don't touch, um, they're on the same flat surface. Okay, now, this is the topic I want to talk about, is this idea of parallel, because there's this there's this idea out there that forms the base, the basis of all geometry, which is called Euclidean geometry. Euclidean geometry. It's the belief that parallel lines actually exist, right? That there, there's such a thing as parallel lines. They never touch. You can draw them, you know, like this. Let's keep on that basic understanding. I'm there too. But there's this argument that parallel lines don't exist. That this is not possible. Okay, now you're probably thinking I'm crazy. I'm not. I'm going to show you a picture that will show you the argument that people try to make about parallel lines. So here we go. Here's the picture I'm going to show you. So, all I'm going to do is this Google Earth, I'm going to zoom into Garner Island. Okay. There's Garner, we're like down here by the high school. Alright, let's zoom in on the highway here. You know, if it's a two-lane highway, the roads are equally spaced. There's an equal amount of space on your side of the road versus the other side of the road. That way, it's safe and you don't crash into each other. It doesn't, they don't suddenly be together all of a sudden. Okay, so this is the idea. But that is a parallel line. Now, I want to take another look at Highway 18. What's going on here? What's the problem? 
problem with it. Yeah. This is the argument that Euclidean geometry has versus non-Euclidean. Euclidean geometry believes parallel lines exist, that the white lines on Highway 18 are equally spaced, cars don't magically crash into each other. Non-Euclidean geometry believes that that is not possible because of that picture of what you're looking at right now. That the white lines on, a, on Highway 18 aren't actually parallel. Parallel does not exist. That eventually those lines have to meet. They have to meet at some point. Now the reason being is because it's a limit. What I, what I mean by a limit is as you go towards the horizon, let me put that picture back up here. As you go towards the horizon, the horizon is this you know, imaginary line at the distance where the sun rises, right? right? As you go to the horizon, right? That's, that distance is infinity. It's, it's an infinite distance away from you. It's not an actual number. It's, it's the direction where you go forever, right? In that direction. Parallel lines will eventually taper together. They'll eventually meet at the horizon mark. The problem that I have with that argument is look at the picture right now. Okay? Look at the picture. What's wrong with that argument for this picture, though, with those lines? What's the argument? Exactly right. You nailed it. The problem that I have with this picture is it's three-dimensional. You're at a weird angle. It's your perspective looking at the picture, right? Before, when I showed you a picture of 18, I was like way above it. I was like a bird's eye view. Right above it. I was actually like on a plane parallel to the plane. I was right above it. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking at this weird three-dimensional like angle so that it proves a certain point. And that's the argument that they have. And they go back and forth whether parallel lines actually exist. Okay? And there's other arguments that, that non-Euclidean Euclidean geometry make. Okay, what you need to realize for this class is that geometry for like high school mathematics and some college you know, geometry is mostly Euclidean. We believe that parallel lines exist because that's what makes objects, right? You can make boxes and triangles because you use straight lines. You don't use these weird perspectives and look at objects from different angles to make certain points. Okay, so that's what you need to realize. So that um, I know that seems goofy to you, but it is a big deal for like if you go to like an upper level math class that sometimes they do look at pictures from different angles and you look at properties um, when we're in like three dimensional space versus non three dimensional objects. That's why a lot of the time in this class we focus so much on like two D images, triangles, squares, rectangles, that type of thing, because there's a lot of properties. Okay, does that make sense? Someone? I know it's kind of kind of out there, but. Um, that's just an argument that I need to bring up because I know that if you if you do actual research on this stuff, um, it can be it can be kind of odd when you first look at it. So again, we just got down with 3D4, believing that parallel lines um, actually exist. That's what makes these objects. Okay. All right. So that was called bless you. that was called the perpendicular transversal theorem. Now, let's go to a couple homework problems talking about parallel lines and all these different types of angles: corresponding, ultimate interior, ultimate exterior, and that same side. Okay. All right. So here's my example. So here's the picture. Okay. So we have a bunch of angles on this picture. You know, 10 through 16. I'm going to give you one of the angles, and I want to see if you can find a few of the other ones. Okay? So that's what I want you to try right now. So if you need a calculator, I'd probably recommend taking one out right now. If you need to borrow one and come over here. Okay? I want you to see if you can find some of these angles if, here's your if, if the measure of angle 11, this angle 11 right here, that's 51 degrees. See if you can find some of the other angles on this picture, or all of them. See what you can do. And yes, these lines are parallel. 
the roll arrow. Okay, I'll give you about two minutes. See if you can do it. You use your partners, you can discuss it. Okay, so I gave you about two minutes here. Okay, somebody you want to venture out and answer, what do you think? Give me give me one of the other angles if you found just one of them. All right, what do you got there, Trevor? What do you got? Okay, so say it again. 129. All right, so 10 is 129. Now, how did you know that? Exactly. These have to make a straight line. That's, that's a great way to do it. So you know that that line X is a straight line. So this has to make 180. So yeah, these have to be supplementary. They're straight. It's a linear pair. Okay. So Rayleigh, what do you got? What's another angle you know? 15 is 51. How do you know that? Because the same angle is the same slope. Okay. Yeah, exactly. These lines are the same slope. They have to be the same. They're called corresponding. You're absolutely right. That's a good way to do it. Trish, what do you got? Okay, why do you know that? Which ones are across? Okay, good. These are across from each other. What do we call that again? You are correct. Start with a V. Vertical. Yeah, the vertical angle. Okay, that was theorem 2A. Okay, another one, please. Somebody else now. That was good. Somebody new now. And we have the same people coming in through. What's another angle up here that's kind of obvious? Okay. 16 is 51. Why? Vertical or corresponding again. We'll do it that way. That's good. Okay. Back, please. Okay. Why is that? Okay. Yeah. So either this way or that way. That's good. Or corresponding again. So that's good. Okay. Why do you know that? Why? <laughs> What's 13? 129. Now there's two ways. You could do you could do uh, vertical, or you could do alternate interior, or you could do corresponding. So there's a bunch of reasons why these all work out. So if you have one angle, you know all the rest of them on a picture. That's just how it works as long as you have parallel lines. Now the key is they had to be parallel for all of that to work. If these were not parallel, none of that worked anymore, and you don't know any of them other than number 10 and 13. That would be the only two you would actually know in 12. Okay. All right. Okay. Move on here. Okay. Next one. All right. So here's my picture. Now, a little more complicated. Now, what you need to realize from this picture, all the lines are parallel. 
So the three going up are parallel, the two going across are parallel to each other. That type of thing. Okay? Alright. So now that we know that, here's your hint. Um, again, I want to find the measure of each angle, one, two, three, and four. Angle number two is 125. 125. Okay? So take your time here. Let's see if we can find the other angles and why. And why. Okay? So take about, I'll give you about a minute, minute and a half. Okay, now just to, pre just to warn you, I'm going to call in some new people now. So not the same, not the same people that answered before. So I'm going to try to go around the room. Let's try to get some new people that are answering. Not the same four or five people that I've had earlier. Okay, now we only really need three more people. All right, Ben, what do you got? Okay, uh, three is one point five. Okay, now good. Why? Uh, because of this. <laughs> because <laughs> why? Because of on the. Uh, it's on the other side, which is, would be, it's like, okay, so how I got it is, if you go on the other side of two, okay. that would be the same, so that is the down. Oh, you so you went like, like over here? Yeah. And down, all right, that's good. So you could do vertical to corresponding, that's yeah. fine. Or, they're called alternate interior. Alternate oh, interior, that's good. Oh. Okay, that was good. <laughs> all right, somebody else, that was good, thank you. So something new now, not the same like four or five that I heard had earlier. Oh, you answered earlier. Something new now. I haven't called anyone. One should be easy, so somebody should be able to answer that. Good spot. All right. Why do you know that? Exactly. You should add two hundred eight. Okay. And now, the last person, please. No, put your hand down. All right. What do you got? Fifty-five. Why? Oh, that's good. Alternate X here. That's good. Seeing that. What else? That was very good. Now, the other reason, these have to add a 380 as well. So just straight across. Okay. All right. That was really good. Nice. Nicely done. All right. So, uh, let's move on. Um, so, does everyone kind of get what we're doing here? I'm trying to get you used to your, like, angles so you're not always stuck in, like, one frame of mind. You don't always have to use corresponding. You can do alternate exterior, alternate interior. You can do vertical and corresponding. Like, you can, like, do different things, or just a lot of you are really good at just seeing that, oh, these are side by side, so they have to have to be that's really nice. All right, here we go. Let's move on. Uh, now, the next one is a little bit trickier. Okay, so a little more a little more depth and thought will need to be put in this next one. All right, so here we go. So we have we have this angle. Obviously, we have uh, parallel lines here, and then these lines are parallel. Now, no, notice they use the little double arrows. That means that these lines are parallel to each other, but they're different than these obvious, duh. I don't know why they need to use two parallel markers, but whatever. There. So we have M, N, P, and Q. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, here's what we're given. We're given that angle five is a 2x minus 10. Angle seven 
is an x plus 15. So the goal on this was to find x and the remaining two angles. Actually, all the angles, really, because we are only given like variables. There is a way to solve this. Now I'm going to give you about a minute here just to think about this problem, and I'm, we're going to go through it together. Um, now I'm, I know that I'm going to do most of some work, but then I'm going to give you a second one. So you can try one on your by yourself. So think about this. So 5 is the 2x minus 10, 7 is the x plus 15. So think about how you would solve that from that picture. How can we find the x? You're right. Five and seven are supposed to be the same angle, but why? Correspond. Correspond. Yeah, they're corresponding <laughs> to each other. So if you know that five and seven, those two angles, are supposed to be the same angle, that means you can set them equal to each other. They're the same angle. Even though they have different labels to them, these are supposed to be the same angle from that picture. So I set them equal. I'm going to solve. This is 1x. I'm going to drag the 1x across, subtract it. Right? Because when you drag it across the equal sign, you have to subtract. I'm going to drag the 10 this way and add it. So that's 15 plus the 10, because when you drag it across the equal sign, it switches. So this turns out to be x, right? That's a 1x. I don't need a 1 up front. And that makes 25. Does that make sense? All right, so now why, why that's important, now that I solved that. Now what I can do is I can take that 25 and plug it in here, and take the 25 and plug it in here. Because if I can plug that 25 in, I know what 5 and 7 are. Like the actual angles, not with weird variables, but like what the actual numbers are. I'm not saying that 5 and 7 are 25 degrees. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the x is the 25. So if I plug in a 25 here, what's 2 times 25? 50 and subtract 10. That's 40. That's the same with this one. This is, this is 25 plus 15, which is 40. Okay? That means these angles here are 40. So now I can go ahead and I can solve for the remaining two angles. I can find 6 and 8. Um, and this is where it's, this is very open-ended how you can find the, the remaining two. What, um, what I would do, um, like personally to find 6, how are those two related? Say it. We had it earlier. Kayla, what did, you, what did you say earlier? Say it. Alternate exterior. So, that's 40. They're the same, right? That was theorem 3, 3. Okay, now, what about 8, though? 8's not alternate exterior. It's not corresponding either, because this 40 goes to here. That's corresponding. That's not 8. So how do I find 8? Exactly. This should be 140. These should add to be 180. So now I have all my angles. Do you see how you have to kind of mix things together? There's different ways you could have done it. I could have done I could have done alternate interior to here, uh, did corresponding to here, and then um, then you know added those up to make 180 again. So that's just something you need to realize. There's, it's very open ended on how these work. All right, so. I'm going to give you your own now. I'm going to let you try one by yourself, just like this, where I'm going to give you variables and you have to solve for one. Okay, this might be our last time today. Okay, so you ready? Okay, here's our last time today. I'll give you about three minutes to try to solve this. Okay, so now I'm giving you six and eight. Six is a four times in parentheses of y minus 25. And 8 is a 4y. That's 6 and 8 on this picture. What I, want, what I want you to try to do is find all the angles in that picture. This is our last problem of the day.
when somebody thinks they have X, I want to hear it. Nope. Not 10. What was the other number I heard? Say it. Nope. 35. Okay, your X should be 35. Now, if you didn't get that, make a quick fix. I I'm going to give you another minute here. Why? Sorry, why? Why is it 35? What? No, no 20. 35 is your why. Try to figure out why. Try to figure out why it's 35. No pun intended. Okay, hey, we're going to continue this one tomorrow. I know the whole book's wrong. Hey, no more for today. We're going to continue this problem tomorrow. So remember, this is where we left off. Oh, he, his, his, uh, his, his, uh, his, his, uh, his, his, uh, his, 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 his,